and welcome to Join the Discussion, a monthly show about senior health and wellness. My name is Madeline Franchese. I am the Vice President of Marketing and Development for Hebrew Senior Care, and I will be your host. Thanks for joining us tonight. Tonight's guest is Bob Mara. Bob is the field supervisor and in charge of business development for Aetna Ambulance. Bob has a BS in psychology and is pursuing his master's in business and emergency management. He is a certified advanced personal trainer. Uh-oh, I need one of those. Um, and he has done that for so long. He has also helped professional athletes and the fire and police train for their agility testing. In, 19, in 2006, though, after his tenure as a, prof, uh, uh, sorry, I need my own cheaters, a personal trainer, and 10 years as a volunteer uh, as an EMT, Bob decided to professionally and personally join Aetna Ambulance. His responsibilities include uh, building relationships with facilities, hospitals, being a road supervisor, as well as assisting with dispatching, assisting new employees as they train for their role. Thanks for joining us tonight, Bob. Thank you, Madeline. Thanks for having me. I have a lot to ask you. All right, let's get going. Okay, <laughs> ambulance service. More than 911 care. Correct. And I know there's a lot to talk about, but most people think of an ambulance, they think of the lights, and they think of the driver. And then they think of people just rushing around in your house or wherever you're go going to. But it's more than that. Um, there are many different employees with a lot of different roles. So first, let's start with how is an ambulance company set up? You have dispatchers, yeah. you have EMTs, mm -hmm. you have paramedics, and I'm going to ask you to explain the difference. Absolutely. What's the difference between a paramedic and an EMT? You have a supervisor, a paramedic supervisor, then we have a field supervisor, that's you. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are other positions I've missed. So first, let's share with our audience what is an ambulance company outside of the ambulance? Well, you just, you just said it. An ambulance company is a company. It's an organization. If you look at it as a tree, it's got every branch that has an intricate role in making sure that this business runs successful. Ambulances are broken up into a couple of, couple of things. It could be municipal, they could be volunteer, or they could be commercial. We are a commercial ambulance service. Um, we, are, we have a CEO. We have directors, we have finance, we have human relations. We have all those, those areas that make up a business. How many people work at an ambulance? We have, uh, as far as road employees, we have approximately 110, mm. 110 plus. Then you add the business side of it, let's add probably about another 10 more on top of that, which encompasses uh, billing, booking. Mm -hmm. So when you call an ambulance, it starts a whole process. Okay. Uh, the process begins with the caller. Uh, the caller is either 911 or the caller is just a routine non-emergent transfer. Two separate things. And we'll go into that later, the difference between them. Absolutely. Okay, so a call comes in. Call comes in. So uh, you do both. All ambulance companies do 911 as well as non-emergent. Depending on the service. Services are, the volunteer services generally just do 911 service. Oh, okay. Municipal, just do 911. Um, their role is to basically sit around and wait for the emergency call to come in. Okay. That's their number one job. We as a business need to fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. And the gaps for us become non emergency transfers, facility to facility transportation for people that have either a doctor's appointment or have some service that's needed. Um, can be anything. Okay, so before we break down, because there's a lot to it, mm -hmm. so the dispatcher is the person literally taking in the call and logging the call. Call takers, call takers take the call in, they hand it off to the dispatcher. Oh, wait, 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 okay, well, oh, I missed uh, something. So first you have someone taking the call, correct. and then the dispatchers are where? Are they in the ambulances? No, nope, they're in a separate location in a room probably about the size of this. They have a lot of cameras, a lot of screens going on in front of them. Uh, they have GPS so that they can see where every single ambulance is, um, where they need to dispatch, who the closest unit is. Uh, so the call taker takes the call in and puts it through a computer system onto the screen of the dispatcher. Got it. Okay. And then basically, so that's your triage war room. Yeah. Yes. What's it's the going brainchild, on? Right. To be honest with you. 
Okay, it's so and is all, all ambulance companies set up the same way, for essentially? The most part, for the most part. Um, so now, okay, so the call comes in mm -hmm. and you, the dispatcher says, okay, I have an ambulance closest to this emergency. Mm -hmm. And then they send it to the, who? The driver gets that call? Correct, they and radio, they, they transmit through the radio system. Are all drivers? Drivers or the EMT paramedics, are they? They're both. They're EMTs. Um, EMTs are just a basic standard life support. Uh, they go through a three to six month process through the state, state certified, um, to do basic life support. Different than the paramedic, which is more of an advanced life support. They're probably about 14 to 16 months worth of training. Okay. Uh, they, ha they work directly under the hospital's medical guidelines. Uh, so they have about 30 to 40 drugs that they actually can utilize oh, wow. um, for okay. patient care. So it's more of an advanced type of, type of uh, service that they are And giving. does every ambulance have uh, a paramedic and an EMT, or how are you? How do you? Who? How do you staff the De ambulance? Depends on the service. For Aetna Ambulance, we service um, um, each ambulance, uh, basically depending on the area that we're covering. So, some towns, Weathersfield, Rocky Hill, uh, we service. Uh, they require a paramedic. Oh, it's all the time. State, it's it's town by town. Towns will dictate how they would want it. So, so what if you go from a town that needs it to a town that doesn't? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, your or the other way around. <laughs> your coverage area is that particular. So you know mm -hmm. your town. So okay. we know we cover the south end of Hartford, mm -hmm. uh, Park Street South, toward to the Weathersfield line. That's our Hartford area, and then we cover Weathersfield and Rocky Hill. So Weathersfield and Rocky Hill r require a paramedic. Um, Hartford. Mm -hmm. Um, only the first call for the 911 requires a paramedic, and then the next can become EMTs only. Okay. Now, uh, you have several lines of supervision. So mm -hmm. the paramedics have a supervisor. You're a field supervisor. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? What other supervisory positions exist, if there are others? Well, we have a, we, we have a director who oversees the entire organization. Um, he basically is in charge of the operations supervisors. The operations supervisors are paramedics. Um, their role is to be able to facilitate any crews that may need help. Um, and they also are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the company. Field supervisors, which are what I am, um, they're basically a road supervisor. They go out and they'll, they'll do, do calls, they'll just be out and about with all the crews, just kind of making sure everything is okay. Um, so you could get a call from a crew needing more assistance or guidance, yep, and absolutely. that call would go to you, not the dispatcher. The call would go over the radio, and generally speaking, what we do is, if, as a field supervisor, you just take the call. Okay. Um, are there any other important positions I've missed that are on the road? I mean, is that basically your complement? You have your EMT, your paramedic in in the ambulance. Yeah people at the home taking the calls. Yeah, and then you have your billing um, mm -hmm. because it's a business. Right, and we're so gonna get into that part every, of it as well. Everything has to be billed somehow, and f especially for us, because if you, s we, we basically do about 60% routine transfers, mm -hmm. um, doctor's visits, 40% um, 911 calls. So it's just a little bit, a little bit more skewed towards the routine transfers for us. How many total employees? So a typical ambulance company is about 150 people? About? For us, our sister company, which is Ambulance Service of Manchester, mm -hmm. um, the two of us, we work hand in hand. Um, they have roughly the same amount of employees, but the nice part about that is with their service and our service, we put two and two together, and we've got double the amount of right. employees should we ever need them. Mm -hmm. um, so depending on the organization, some organizations have less, some have more. Some volunteer organizations have two, and they work the whole process on a pager system. Right. And just because you're a part of a volunteer ambulance, obviously the ride's not free. <laughs> the people right. are volunteering. The people are volunteering, <laughs> and, we'll and they give... A hundred percent for for timeless. I mean, the middle Amazing. of the night they'll come out as well, um, basically for a small stipend. So Absolutely. They're, they're, and just because they're volunteer does not mean that they have less training. Mm -hmm. Their training is exactly the same as people that myself that are paid. Um, are they? They're considered so though EMTs. They're considered EMTs. Uh, or can you be a volunteer? You could be a paramedic and still volunteer, or no? No. 
technically no. Because legally, yeah, right? Technically you no, you have to be under the hospital care. Okay, okay. And I know I'm, I'm going to jump around a little bit, but I live in a, a rural area in Connecticut, and of course we depend on volunteer everything, fire, mm -hmm. ambulance. Mm -hmm. um, those thank people God, are right? just amazing yeah, to me. God. They are absolutely <laughs> amazing, and we're always looking for volunteers. Is, is volunteering for these kind of services down or up? Or? Volunteering is down. When I first when I first started um, back in the early 2000s, um, you could not find a shift. Mm. You, you would be four people in an ambulance. It would just be impossible. I think over time, through the bad economies, people started needing the money mm. and they realized that volunteering they could probably be working and doing some other some mm. other things to gain money rather than give up their time so yeah it's down it's down significantly mm. um, so okay and we'll we'll put a shout out at the end for people to absolutely. think about um, volunteering absolutely. and learning those skills and we talk a little bit about that um, there are different ambulance companies but you all you're all set up similarly but do you have territories can you go over state bounds how does it work with the businesses as long as for the state as long as it's either pick up or drop off in the state of Connecticut we can cross over lines we cannot cross over for 911s that, to other states to other states okay. that is 911s are set up uh, with with um, basically areas um, designated by a particular by a particular company. So, say for instance, um, we have Weathersfield, Rocky Hill, South End of Hartford. Um, ASM has a how lot. How was of that determined, though, originally? Like, how do you decide? Contracts go up for bid. Oh, I see. It's all based by the on, towns. It's all based on contracts. So you have a contract with each of these towns. Correct. Oh, every, I see. Every commercial service has a contract. Okay. Um, um, basically, a PSA. Mm -hmm. um, it's a primary service area. Um, that they cover um, and under law under the guidelines of the state of Connecticut you are not allowed to cross into that area and take 911 calls from that other so it's 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 good and it's bad mm -hmm. um, it, it it defines an area but other bigger companies can't come in and s basically steal your would that, that ever change if there were a statewide emergency that was so significant that all hands were on deck is there ever a time where they say From it doesn't a mass matter? From casualty, it doesn't yeah, matter. Right, then all of you would pitch once, in and once, it wouldn't matter. Once, yeah, once a mass casualty is designated, mm -hmm. then then there's no there's very little boundaries. It becomes okay. up to the state to guideline how it works out, and that happens. Oof, hopefully not, yeah. Mm -hmm. You you had mentioned it before. Um, let's talk about a little bit the difference between emergency and non-emergent transport. Okay. There, you know, there's a lot of confusion about this. Um, mm -hmm. I work at Huber Senior Care, and mm -hmm. of course, our hospital at Huber Senior Care, we specialize in treating seniors for very specific non-emergent issues. Mm -hmm. So if you have a heart attack, if you have a stroke, you're not coming to our hospital okay, in a 911 know. call. However, you're dehydrated, you're confused, you need antibiotics, IV, um, CHF, COPT difficulties, you're with your primary, the primary care physician can call for direct admission, mm -hmm. then our um, future patient calls an ambulance company for non-emergent transport. Correct. So talk about that from your perspective. I mean, are there simple guidelines for this is an emergency, this is clearly not. This is how it works. I think I think ultimately it's 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 everything comes down to the patient status um, and the call taker. Mm -hmm. um, if if you're feeling as a call taker that you need to go to an emergency room because the patient is critical, that's that's one that's one option. Um, for for your facility that you're speaking of, you, it's, it's a very unique situation because you're actually a hospital. You're designated right, we're in as a care hospital, facility, and exactly. I don't I don't think people realize that they they think of it's a it's a it's a facility for mm. for you know rehab or something like right. that. Um, so they don't use that as an option. Like I said, yours is unique. We're just starting to get used to facilities like yours. Mm -hmm. Um, that do say, yeah, we w the patient is stable. Uh, we have, have some abnormal labs, or we just need a little bit of a breathing si treatment situation. There is no 
there is no um, acuity at this patient at this point in time, so they can handle a a, a routine transportation to this particular facility. And and I think you know healthcare evolves every day, every hour. Right. Probably by the time this airs, something will have changed. Right. And but people don't like change either. No. That's another thing. Is 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 anything that's a change in the healthcare is mm -hmm. going to get kicked back. It's and and it's confusing back. as well for seniors who are mm. just looking to get the care that they need. Right. Um, and, and the non-emergent transport situation is covered some t most times by Medicare. Can we talk a little bit about, first of all, let's back up actually. Okay. Do you need to be pre-qualified to get in that ambulance? I mean, someone obviously needs an ambulance. Should they be thinking about their insurance coverage at if that point? We, we can transport to a hospital, um, to the emergency room. Um, that's based on benefits usually covered by most insurance companies. Mm -hmm. um, um, like I said, yours is a little bit unique. Um, it's a hospital. Theoretically, it's an emergency room setting. When you do go in, it, it's, it's usually covered, once again, based on benefits. Mm -hmm. For non-emergency doctor's appointments, Medicare doesn't pay for doctor's appointments, but right. they'll pay for other criteria that might be stretcher necessary, and that's Huge is stretcher necessary, and and what kind of know, things make it make a patient need a stretcher that helps qualify? Um, oxygen, mm -hmm. the need for oxygen, um, the needs for supervision. If you have a patient with advanced dementia, mm -hmm. uh, that would require one-on-one -on -one supervision for safety. Has sake. that changed your um, day-to-day? Uh, 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 situations and training um, with the increase in cognitive impairments that you're seeing? Are you starting to need to be, you know, certified dementia practitioners in terms of knowing what to look for? For, for, for our sake, we are, we are not with the patient for, for that long of a time. Um, most of the time, as long as we have an awareness of it, mm -hmm. um, most, most patients are directable. Yes. Um, so, for, and our crews are just phenomenal. I mean, we, we, we have dealt with many, many, many different types of patients and um, a lot of street smarts. A lot of street mm. smarts, people understand the looks, they understand the mentality, they understand the safety, where to be, where not to sit, mm -hmm. um, how to just de-escalate a situation in a patient. So, so most of our, uh, most of our um, training, as far as that goes, would be more street training. Um, once again, because we're with a patient so so briefly. Right. Um, Would you say it, it seems to me um, that there's a there's a commonality among the kind of people who work in an ambulance company mm -hmm. or even volunteer to to do that kind of work? Common traits. Do, do you see them as well in the people you hire or the volunteer? What would be those common traits? I mean, I can think of a few. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely um, compassion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely compassion. Um, the willingness to help. Mm -hmm. I would say that most of the people that we have working for us, that if they see somebody in need on the side of the road, it, not just in nature, yes. would stop and help them. Um, but you can't legally, right? Like, say you see someone, I'm curious, you're driving and you're to lunch, no call. And you see on the side of the road an emergency starting to unfold. Can you stop or no? Absolutely. Good Samaritan rules. Okay. They, they allow us to anybody. If okay. You, you are allowed to stop and render care without without fear of. Okay. As long as it's within the scope of normalcy. Okay. Um, if I'm a if I'm a paramedic driving in say another town that's not in an area that I'm covered, I can't start an IV or anything like that. But I can certainly render, render assistance mm -hmm. um, until the ambulance shows up. Okay. Absolutely, 100%. Okay, so you're willing to go out on a limb always. What other characteristics? I think you're all a little bit got a sense of humor because, wow. Kind of a sick sense of humor, You'd actually. have to. <laughs> <laughs> I know that uh, some of the things that come out of our mouths or yeah. uh, some, uh, say something at the dinner table, my wife will just look at me and go, I just can't believe you said that. Um, it's, it helps um, you cope, though, It's right? coping skills. Yeah. It's coping skills. And, and when we're all around together, it's actually a little scary. Um, but um, <laughs> it, it, we, we, we see and we do a lot of things that, that require some sort of coping mechanism. Um, and, and without that, um, you tend to internalize it too much and 
you just don't you either don't last in the field or you just become bitter and mm -hmm. um, and the, it tends to work itself out bitter people tend to bitter to because away. they don't like what they're seeing why the people get themselves in the situations or just, the tension of just, just having tension to they get angry it. at people they then then, mm -hmm. then things just kind of change mentally and then they forget the reason why they got into the business right. in the first place. How did you get into this to begin with? I mean, I originally got into it when uh, when my daughter was born. Um, I had uh, I had felt the need to at least be able to do something because uh, I was so other than pay for all her clothes or college or, and her or, shoes or, or the, wed or the <laughs> wedding the we wedding. just did. Um, <laughs> wow, the, what a guy! The um, <laughs> the. Uh, you know, I, I, we, were, we were frightened enough as new parents mm -hmm. that I, I always felt like if I could, you know, God forbid mm -hmm. something happened, if I could at least do wow. something to help. So I took this little course in Newington and ended up studying, and I did a volunteer for 10 years in Bloomfield, and mm -hmm. um, and a friend of mine across the street said, hey, why don't you come work for Aetna Ambulance? It's a neat little company. So I went, I applied, and and, <laughs> and there I am. And I, What's the difference between doing it as a volunteer and doing it for a job? Is there a difference? For me, no. For me, no. I, I, I just love all aspects of this mm -hmm. whole industry. Um, I don't, I, I volunteered and loved it, and I'm working for Aetna, and I equally as love it. It's, it's just, you know, it's a calling. It's, it's mm -hmm. doing what you want to do. A absolutely. And, and as long as you always keep touch with that, you'll just, it's, it's yeah, emergency responders, fire, police. Oh my God, they're greatest just people greatest world. people. I, I, I Shout have outs a, to all of them. Unfortunately, absolutely. I have a, a early recollection. Um, my father passed away when I was 16. Had a heart attack in the house, mm -hmm. ambulance, the whole situation. Um, and then many, 10 years later, my mother unfortunately fell ill. And I still remember this one day she was being taken out the last 24 hours to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And you know how ambulance comes and fire? So the firemen come in, and as they're taking her out on a stretcher, one of the firemen must have knocked over a glass of water. And my mother, almost in a coma, looks up and says, what is it with you guys? There's always water on the floor when you, <laughs> it was just one of those moments. And all of them started to laugh. And we were all just, yeah, these we are were, the people you want to be around. We absolutely, we absolutely, in Hartford, we have Hartford Fire Department that is first on scene and they help us. Do they always come when an ambulance is called? Only on priority ones. Uh, which is what? For Hartford. Uh, for which are priority for one? A, for um, critical calls. Okay. We have, we have, we have priority two or, or cold response. Why do they need to come though? If you're the ones with all the medical <laughs> training, what are they doing? Because, I mean. because Hartford is um, so unique that we need extra hands. Okay. And the extra hands on calls are absolutely a blessing. Wow. Um, they, the fire department will actually come in and kind of set the scene so that we can just walk right in and, and take care of what we need to take care of. Are many of the firemen EMTs or um, have training? No. Actually, we just hired one. We just, <laughs> we just hired one today. Um, uh, they are um, MRTs. Um, um, Basic, basic yeah. is, um, life support. Oh, another tough job. You know, the commonality for all of them. Mm -hmm. Everyone else runs away. Your jobs, you run towards danger, right. all of you. All and of it's us. just, thank God, Absolutely. people like you exist. Um, do you stay in touch? What, give me, um, I'm sure you must receive thank you notes and letters. And uh, have you ever s had a situation where you've saved somebody where you've later seen them or you, been able you to? You run into them in the grocery store. <laughs> Always. Is what you do. And really? they And they generally remember who you are. Hopefully. I'm actually in a unique position from what my new job is, is I get to see all the thank you notes for all the crews. Mm. Um, so you actually get to see um, crews um, that have just blessed people's lives and have saved their lives. Exactly. And you get to you get to really understand because then you get to g show them the thank you letter or the or the from the husband or the wife thank you for for giving me my wife back. Um, you know, <laughs> oh a good my friend God. of ours, a good friend of ours. Um, um, same same thing for another town. They were able to uh, to thank the crew, and it's an amazing thing. It's yeah, amazing. It, thing. it makes better. it worth it. Absolutely. Um, so you did. We did already talk about um, Medicare coverage, um, but anybody watching this show should understand 
If you need an ambulance, you do not think about insurance. You mm -hmm. call 911 and you get an ambulance. Is that correct? Absolutely. No Absolutely. one has to be pre-qualified. If you need help, yep. that's what you're there for. That's what they, we, we get calls. We get calls for everything. Um, people, because everybody's, everybody's life's incidents are different. Some mm -hmm. may say, you know, they cut their hand and it's the worst thing in the world because that's their, you know, frame mm -hmm. of reference. Call an ambulance if you if you if you're hurt. <laughs> right. Call an ambulance. I, I'm I'm sort of laughing because I'm thinking about a time my husband um, is also a woodworker as well as uh, uh, works in education and he once cut his thumb mm. on the table saw and of course you know I work in healthcare did I get an ambulance no I yeah, wrapped no. it in a rag and drove yeah. really fast. Yeah. <laughs> and my kids will say you do not recommend that, correct? <laughs> correct. My my kids will say that you know don't go to dad unless it's yeah, bleeding or bent the wrong direction because right. you're not going to get anything from him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're probably very hardened to what's an emergency. Yeah, exactly. Oh, get up. Your leg is fine. Yep. Just screw it back Absolutely. on. Um, we're, believe it or not, already coming to the end of the oh. half hour. Okay. Um, what advice would you give to caregivers or seniors in terms of ambulance transportation? Is there anything you'd want people who are watching to know? Just to, just to use your head. Um, ambulance there's a lot of stuff that goes on when you call an ambulance. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of scary, scary things for a lot of people that don't know what's going on. For a lot of seniors, it might be that this might be the last trip out of their house. Yeah, exactly. Um, just, uh, just be aware if you're a caretaker, be aware that there's a lot of fear and anxiety that's going on. Um, you know, I, I think our biggest, our biggest mistake in our society is that we forget uh, what all the all our, our uh, seniors have given our country mm -hmm. and our world, and and you know we want to make sure that they are they feel safe as well as they've made us feel safe. I exactly. I often wonder whether you. I remember when we were young parents and we had those stickers on our kids' windows for the fire department mm -hmm. to know if there were children. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think we with eight thousand people turning sixty five every day for the next eighteen years. Right. We may want to start to designate homes that have seniors, right? So that people know when you're entering what you're going into. And another quick thing is the vial of life. So have something on the refrigerator door um, that shows what medicine. Oh, who very to call. good. Because um, oh. when we go in, a lot of times we're guessing. Okay, that's. A, I'm going to wrap up with that important tip. So please, if you have, if you're a senior, or really anyone who's living at home, make sure you have your health information. Um, easily accessible, what medication you're taking, um, what you're allergic to, right, um, and who's your first contact. Yep. Um, you know, these are people who you need to tell everything to. Mm -hmm. They're your lifeline. And at that moment, you don't want to hold back. They're there to Not help you. Mm -hmm. um, I know real quick, your company does a ton of charity work. Yeah. Um, so first, thank you, because your work is charity in itself, the what you're doing. We, yeah. But then you give to so many causes and get yeah. involved. Does that help all of you to It does. We try, to do, we try to do one a month. We just did a brain freeze down, mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, down in New Haven um, for brain, can brain tumors. Um, cancer, we do cancer. We're doing a blood drive tomorrow. Mm. I'm going to be giving blood. So, um, yeah, our, our CEO loves to try to do one one benefit a month that's terrific throughout the year so it kind of brings us back to the community thank you bob for joining me i told you when we first got on this would go quickly mm -hmm. and it did um thank you for watching tonight if you have questions about tonight's show please email me at join the discussion at hebrewseniorcare.org and if you would like to suggest a guest you can do that as well at the same email uh, join the discussion at hebrewseniorcare.org until next month Thank you, stay safe, and thank all those emergency people. Have a good night.